Leia here from LeiaFirstSci.com and in this video I will take you through the E1 reaction rate and mechanism. The E in E1 stands for elimination and the 1 tells you that this is a unimolecular reaction. So let's break this down. Elimination means to remove something or to get rid of something and specifically we're getting rid of a beta hydrogen and a leaving group. So this reaction should actually be called beta elimination. Unimolecular does not tell you that it's a one-step reaction, but instead tells you that it's a first-order reaction and can actually involve two or more steps. So let's see what happens in a beta elimination reaction. The reaction begins when the leaving group breaks away from the parent chain, dissolving somewhere in solution and leaving you with a positive charge on the parent chain. Let's classify the carbons on this molecule. The carbon that first held the leaving group and now has a positive charge is considered the alpha or the first carbon and any carbon directly attached to the alpha carbon can be considered carbon number two or simply the beta carbon. On this molecule we have three equivalent beta carbons each of which has three hydrogens which we'll call beta hydrogens. In the final step of this reaction a base will use its lone pair of electrons to grab one of the beta hydrogens but only the nucleus and not the bonding electrons. When the hydrogen is grabbed, the electrons that bound it to the carbon will collapse towards that positive charge, forming a pi bond between the alpha and the beta carbon. The final product in an E1 reaction has a pi bond between the alpha and beta carbon where we eliminated the beta hydrogen and the leaving group. An important thing to recognize here is that even though the leaving group is departing by itself, this is still considered a very slow step because you're taking a neutral molecule, breaking something off it, resulting in a positive product. This is such a slow step, it's actually the rate determining step of this reaction. Let's take a look at the kinetics of an E1 reaction. The rate of an E1 reaction is equal to some constant K that you don't have to worry about times the concentration of the molecule involved in the rate determining step, meaning the alkyl chain. The final step of the reaction, where the base grabs a hydrogen, that happens so quickly that the speed is negligible compared to how slowly that carbocation forms, and so the base is not looked at when determining the rate of an E1 reaction. Since only one molecule shows up in the rate law, we have a first order reaction, and this gives us the one in our E1 or unimolecular reaction. This tells you that if you double the concentration of your starting molecule, the reaction rate will double. If you triple the concentration, the reaction rate will triple. But if you double the concentration of the base, nothing happens to the rate of the reaction because the concentration of the base doesn't do anything to the speed of this reaction. Let's look at the mechanism for the E1 reaction by analyzing what happens when 2-bromo-2-ethylpentane reacts with H2SO4 in water and heat by using the four-part checklist that I analyze all substitution and elimination reactions. For detailed videos on how to analyze each aspect of this checklist, visit my website layoffersci.com slash substitution dash elimination. We'll begin with the alkyl chain, specifically looking at both the alpha and the beta carbons. The alpha carbon, which holds the leaving group, is a tertiary carbon, which tells you that you can form a stable carbocation and therefore a one-type reaction, meaning SN1 or E1, can take place. While SN2 cannot take place with a tertiary leaving group, we can't rule out the E2 reaction. For elimination reactions, you also want to look at your beta carbons to ensure that you have hydrogens that can be removed for the reaction to proceed. Next we look at the leaving group. Bromine, which forms a stable anion solution, is a good leaving group that can depart by itself, allowing both a 1-type, meaning SO1E1, or a 2-type, SN2E2, to take place. Next we look at the attacking molecule. Since this is elimination, we're not looking for a nucleophile, but rather looking for a base. The problem is we don't seem to have one. In fact, H2SO4 is an acid, so how can we have a base in this solution? Whenever it appears that you don't have a reactive molecule present, look for the concept of solvolysis, where the solvent itself acts as the attacking molecule. H2O, in addition to being the solvent, is also a weak base. Because it's neutral, it's not strong enough to forcibly kick out a leaving group and will have to resort to the one-type reaction, meaning SO1 or E1, where it waits for the leaving group to depart before attacking the molecule. 
And lastly, we have H2O as a solvent, which is polar protic, and that means it can stabilize any charges that form in solution and will therefore also favor our one-type reactions. You will often see competition between your SO1 and E1 reaction, so don't automatically say that only one or only the other can happen. In this case, we can have both SO1 and E1 take place. However, there are two things I want to point out. The first is that we have the triangle which represents heat, and heat tends to favor elimination over substitution. The second thing, since this is an E1 video, I'm only going to show the mechanism for E1, but keep in mind we will have some substituted products forming as well. The E1 reaction starts out when the leaving group grabs the two bonding electrons and breaks away from the carbon molecule, dissolving somewhere in solution. The carbon that used to hold the leaving group is now deficient and gets a formal charge of plus one. Since this is a tertiary carbocation, it is stable in solution, and don't forget it's also surrounded by the polar protic water molecules, stabilizing it even further. We can show the Br- as off somewhere in solution, and now let's look at the beta carbons. The carbon holding the carbocation is alpha, and any carbon directly attached to that is considered beta. On this molecule, we have three beta carbons, and since the molecule is perfectly symmetrical, so are the beta carbons. The carbocation is your alpha carbon, and any carbon directly attached to that is your beta carbon. In line structure, you typically do not show hydrogens, but because we're doing a beta elimination, I want to show you all the beta hydrogens and realize that they're all equivalent given that this molecule is perfectly symmetrical. Because every beta hydrogen is equivalent, I can choose one at random to proceed with the reaction. Recall that water is a polar protic solvent, meaning we have a partial negative oxygen and two partially positive hydrogen atoms. Water will reach out with a lone pair on the partially negative oxygen to grab one of the beta hydrogen. The two electrons that hold the hydrogen to the carbon will break away from the hydrogen and collapse towards that positive alpha carbon. The resulting molecule now has a double bond between the alpha carbon and the beta carbon where the elimination took place. We also have a positive hydronium in solution, which balances the Br- that departed in the first step. A quick charge analysis shows us a neutral starting molecule, a negative bromine, and a carbocation for a net charge of zero at the intermediate level, and a negative bromine and positive hydronium for a net charge of zero in the products. Be sure to join me in part two of this series, where we analyze the products of an E1 reaction based on Zaitsev's rules and the stability of substituted alkenes. You can also find my entire substitution and elimination series on my website, layerforside.com slash substitution dash elimination. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry using the link below or visit layofersci.com slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit layofersci.com slash orgo tutor. That's O-R-G-O tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, Leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.